Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. If you like this video, comment, like, and subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. We're so close to 1,000 subscribers, so subscribe if you haven't done already, and let's get started. Now, we do have one over x cubed minus one over x plus one quantity cubed is equal to seven over eight, and we're supposed to solve this equation. I know some of you will try to guess and check, and you could probably find a solution that way. But I'm going to show you the algebraic approach, and it's a very cool approach, by the way. You know, we've done equations like this before, and one of the nicest approaches that I've seen uh, in these kinds of problems is that we go from one variable to two variables. That's what we're gonna do today, okay? So that's the plan. And then we're gonna be using some manipulations, you know, so on and so forth. But the journey is gonna be pretty interesting, and you'll see lots of lots of good algebra. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Now, this is what I'd like to do. I'm going to make some substitutions here, obviously. Our goal is to go from one variable to two variables. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to call this guy here one over x. Uh, I'm gonna call that a. So a is gonna be one over x, and b is going to be one over x plus one. Now, what is so good about doing this is that I'm getting a difference of two cubes. So basically, this results in this equation, a cubed minus b cubed is equal to seven over eight. Nice, okay, cool. So now we have two variables, so what? Well, I kind of need to associate a and b. I, I, I mean, our goal is to go from one variable to two variables, but also at the same time, get two equations. So we're basically gonna be solving a system of equations, but what, what's the other equation, right? Well, if you look at a and b carefully, you know that uh, the difference of their cubes is given, but if you flip them, if you flip them, for example, you're going to get x equals 1 over a, and in the second one, you're going to be getting x plus 1 is equal to 1 over b. Beautiful. Now, notice that the difference between x and x plus 1, the positive difference is 1. So if I subtract them, in other words, 1 over b minus 1 over a is equal to x plus 1 minus x, which is 1, right? Can I safely say that? Yes. Okay, now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, let's make a common denominator. Obviously, a and b, you know, are not, uh, they're not supposed to be zero because that, me, that would make the equation... Um, it, okay, what happens if a is equal to zero? Then x needs to approach infinity. Okay, so that's not going to work. Um, well, let's make a common denominator. Uh, multiply by a, so it's going to be a minus b over ab is equal to 1. What is that supposed to mean? It means that a minus b and ab are the same thing. a minus b is equal to AB. Okay, so I basically achieved the result that I was looking for. I wanted to uh, come up with a system of equations with two variables. And here we go. Now, why is this a good approach? First of all, because now you can actually manipulate this algebraically. And what are we going to do for that purpose? For that purpose, I'm going to go ahead. Now, again, there's different ways to do it. You can expand difference of two cubes, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'd like to take the a minus b and cube it, okay? Why? You'll see in a little bit, all right? Stay tuned. So this is going to be a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. You know the binomial theorem. Okay, cool. Now, what can I do with this? Well, I do have that a minus b is ab, so let's go ahead and work on this a little bit more. So what I'd like to do is, and since I know the value of a cubed minus b cubed, I'd like to take advantage of that. So I'm gonna put those two together, which makes sense, right? And then the rest of the terms that are in the middle originally, I'm going to factor them. Uh, 3ab is a common factor, rather negative 3ab. And we should be getting from here, a minus b. Beautiful. So we got to a minus b more than once, and we know that a minus b is the same as ab. So why not replace a minus b with ab and a cubed minus b cubed with seven over eight, right? Exactly. Okay, cool. So. One thing uh, to probably remember here, anyways, let me just substitute and then I'll talk about it. Uh, something, there's something that I have to tell you. Hopefully I won't forget. Okay, so a minus b is the ab, so we're going to replace a minus b with ab here. a cubed minus b cubed is equal, is equal to 7 over 8, right? Minus ab is ab and a minus b is also ab. So what am I getting? Well, I'm getting like ab, an equation in ab only. Isn't that nice? Well, I can solve for this, right? If I can use substitution. So let AB equals P, meaning that that's the product, okay? 
Cool. So I should be getting p cubed is equal to 7 over 8 minus 3p squared. Nice. I don't like the fractions. I don't know who likes them. Well, we kind of have to work with them sometimes, but let's get rid of fractions, okay? So I'm going to multiply everything by 8. And then it should be like this. And of course, I'd like to put everything on the same side so that I can get a cubic. Now this cubic, don't let this cubic scare you because, you know, cubic formula is kind of scary, but this is a special cubic. You'll see in a little bit. Now, why is it special first of all? Well, you don't really want the a coefficient for p cubed. You want to you wanna make it monic. Monic means the leading coefficient is one. So how do you make that? Well, it's possible if you consider the following. I can write this as 2p cubed and 24p p squared can be factored as 6 times 4p squared. So I can write it as 6 times 2p quantity squared and minus 7 is equal to 0. So this is what I was talking about. How do you make it monic, right? So now we'll do another substitution. Substitution is awesome. So let's call 2p u. So now we get u cubed plus 6u squared minus 7 is equal to 0. Nice. Well, this is still a cubic, but at least it's monic. And monic cubics are easier to solve. First of all, what is one of the very first things that you check when you get a cubic, quartic, whatever, quintic, doesn't matter. You have to check for the sum of the coefficients because if the sum of the coefficients is zero for a polynomial, then u equals one is a solution for that polynomial or x or whatever the variables. In this case, it works. Why? Because if you replace u with one, then you get 1 plus 6 minus 7 is equal to 0. Actually, it's verified, which means that u equals 1 is a solution, which means that u minus 1 is a factor. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, if you know u minus 1 is a factor, you can do long division, polynomial division, synthetic, artificial, whatever. We're not going to do it that way. Again, we're going to do it the cool way. How do you do it the cool way? Well, here we go. So I'm going to take the u cubed and manipulate it. How? Well, I'm just going to subtract u squared from here. And the reason why I do that is because I know u minus 1 is a factor. So I want to make this divisible by u minus 1. Does that make sense? OK, cool. Hopefully that made sense. And of course, we have a leftover. Uh, we have to take care of that. We can't just add or subtract anything as we wish. So we have to balance it. OK, cool. So everything balances out. You see that? Now I have two pieces. I can pull out u squared. That's going to be u minus 1. And I can pull out a 7, and which is going to give me u squared minus 1. And it's beautiful because u squared minus 1, u squared minus 1 is divisible by u minus 1. So I can factor further, which is really nice. You know, I can write this as u plus 1 u minus 1, and so on and so forth. So basically, to keep a long story short, we can find all the solutions of this equation because it's very factorable. So I'd like to take out u minus 1 because it's a common factor, and we already know u equals 1 is a valid solution. Is that really valid? We're going to check that. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? So what am I getting? u squared plus 7 times u plus 1, so that's going to be 7u plus 7. So you might be saying, okay, this is a cubic and there seems to be three solutions. Are they all real? Yes, they are, because if you check the discriminant of the quadratic piece, b squared minus 4ac, it works. So we have solutions um, that are real. Okay, uh, then are we going to get three solutions from here? Not necessarily. Let's see why. Okay, cool. So, well, why don't we just go ahead and write down all the solutions? u equals 1 or from here you're going to be getting negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Let's do that here, b squared minus 4 times 7. That's 49 minus 28, which is 21. Awesome. So basically, I'm getting these two solutions from here. But guess what? Look at this equation carefully. Remember, we had a video on Vieta's formula. So that should tell you something, right? Okay, we didn't talk about it for nothing. Vieta's formulas tell you that both of these roots are negative. Why? Because their product is positive and their sum is negative. Remember the negative b over a and the c over a? So both of the u values here are negative. Therefore, they will be rejected, right? We're not going to use that. Well, why are you rejecting the negative values? But, well, what is u equal to? Let's go back and explore. Okay, u is equal to 2p, right? u is equal to 2p. And what is p equal to? a, b. What is a, b equal to? a minus b. Beautiful. Let's take a look at this now. So u is equal to 2p, okay? 
well maybe i should change colors here all right so let's go ahead and cross that out u equals 2p and p is equal to ab so u is equal to 2ab which is equal to 2 times a minus b well when i say you must be positive I'm, I'm talking about a is greater than b let's take a look okay what is a what is b oh okay well, a is 1 over x, b is 1 over x plus 1. So what's so special about that? Well, take a look at this. a cubed minus b cubed is equal to 7 over 8, right? So a cubed minus b cubed is positive, right? What is that supposed to mean? It means that a cubed is greater than b cubed, which means a is greater than b, which means a minus b is positive, which means u is positive. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So we have to have the condition that u is positive, therefore these roots don't satisfy that equation. Therefore, to keep a long story short, and I'm, I know I'm kept it too long, u equals one. Okay, u is equal to two p, remember? So if it equals one, then p is equal to one, but p is equal to a b, so a b is equal to one half. Great. What is that supposed to mean, a b is equal to one half? That means a minus b is also equal to one half. Beautiful, nice. How do you work this out? Well, this is gonna turn into a quadratic, right? Okay. But what is A, what is B, right? Let's go back to the beginning because we still have to back substitute. What is A, what is B? Well, A is equal to one over X and B is equal to one over X plus one, okay? A is equal to one over X and B is equal to one over X plus one. Now, it doesn't matter which of these you use because it's gonna give you the same thing. Well, do you wanna use the subtraction? You wanna use the product? I wanna use the product, okay, fine. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the reciprocals of these, right? Well, not the reciprocals, reciprocals of x and x plus one, yes. So AB is equal to one over x times one over x plus one, and that's supposed to equal one half. If you reciprocate both sides, then you get x times x plus one is equal to two. Finally, after all these manipulations, we were able to reach an equation that has x in it. Nice. Now, how do you solve this? Easy, piece of cake. And this equation is actually factorable. So you can go ahead and uh, factor it like this, or you can think about it like a number times one more than a number is two. So can't that number be one? Oh yes, definitely. One is a solution and uh, negative two is the other solution because negative two times negative one is also positive two. Therefore, we have two solutions and they're both valid because their difference is positive, right? Or the reciprocals or whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. They're good. If you cube them, uh, it is going to work because you have to flip them, right? If you cube one, one. If you cube negative two, you get negative one eighth. But if you have to, um, I'm sorry. If you cube negative two, you get negative eight. You get the idea. Okay, I'm talking too much here. I think this is a good point to stop. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you tomorrow at the same time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.